Well, this morning, the presentation I'm going to do is called Getting to Yes. All right? Uh, does that intrigue you in that title to you? What does it take to get to yes? Well, I'm going to get to that. And, and through, each, through sharing my personal story, uh, I will hopefully encourage you and show you how I myself took 30 years to finally say, hey, I would like to get to yes. And there's a whole concept around that, and we'll get to that in a minute. But I want to tell you a little bit about myself so you can get an understanding of why I would be up here even telling you about getting to yes. Does that sound okay to you guys? All right, well, my story starts in 1977. I was born in Texas, uh, moved shortly thereafter to a town south of Joplin, Missouri, called Anderson. Are you guys familiar? Southwest Missouri, very small, rural town. Judy, you know where it is. There's about, I just drove down there the other day. There's 1,900 people, and I'm pretty sure there's probably twice as many cows in that whole county. All right? So it'll come into play as I explain what we're talking about this morning. But as I... As I explain my story, I want to let you know that I grew up in a great home. I knew who God was. I grew up in a Christian home. My mom and dad were wonderful people. But as I was growing up, I didn't have everything that I wanted. Anybody relate with that? I always wanted things a little bit better. Wanted more shoes. Wanted more clothes. Didn't like the stuff that mom and dad always got me. And I always thought, at a very young age, those people that are in there, God, they're a little bit weird. Huh? So anyway, but I wanted acceptance and I needed acceptance. I wanted to be liked by my friends. You guys can relate with that? So I found acceptance early in my life on the athletic field. I was an all-conference football, basketball, and baseball player. I was a varsity football, basketball, and baseball player. I was nominated to All-State my senior year in football and baseball. I uh, graduated in the top 20% of my class, graduated with a 3.75 GPA. Had quite a resume that I could hold up to people. But despite all the things that I just told you about, despite the love that I got from my parents, I still had quite a few secrets. I started uh, smoking cigarettes when I was 14, alcohol at 15, tried to speed for the first time at 17, and at the age of 18 years old, even though I was an athlete, I was using marijuana on a daily basis. So I, with all these things, I became a liar, a manipulator, a con artist, and I, and I started stealing because I wanted those things that I never could have or I thought I should be able to have. So, But I still had my eyes set on playing college football. Now, playing college football, I got recruited heavily out of the state, uh, of Missouri, Oklahoma, and Arkansas. But I followed my best friend to Central Missouri State. Do we have any Warrensburg? Where's Adriatic at? He's not up here yet. Uh, you guys from Warrensburg? Well, I decided to go to Central Missouri State University, and here's one of my great jokes. I didn't go there because they had the coolest mascot. They're the fighting mules. Yeah. All right, there's a joke in there, isn't there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, anyway, I went to Central Missouri State because my identity was wrapped up in everybody else, specifically my best friend. I did get a scholarship to play football there. And once I got to Central Missouri State, uh, I was really happy because I got to meet a guy. His name was Terry Nolan. Terry Nolan was the head football coach at Central Missouri State University. Great guy, like a grandfather figure to me. Terry Nolan and I became very good friends. My first semester there went really well. As a red shirt freshman, I was pulled out of red shirt status, got to start three football games on the NCAA collegiate level as a starting quarterback. I won two of those. My acceptance was on the highest level you could ever imagine. I was getting attention that I'd never gotten before. My name was in the newspaper. I was getting attention from women for maybe for the first time in my life. My acceptance was being fulfilled. But after that first semester, I had some... I'm not flipping through my slides, are I? Am I? I'm sorry. After that first semester... At Central Missouri State, there I am. See the circle right there? At the first semester of Central Missouri State, Terry Nolan had was fired, and my hopes and my dreams left with Terry Nolan, along with my financial aid. Now, my financial aid leaving with him, I was hurt. I was upset. Even though I finished my first year with a 3.25 GPA, I was still mad because my friend was gone. Now, I did what every college kid does. What do they do? And I'm going to give you a hint. They do not study. All right. What do they do? Party. They party. They drink a lot. But I was one of those guys. I had an addictive personality. Does anybody in here struggle with substance or has struggled with substance abuse in the past? Now, the addictive personality. It's like, hey, you want a beer, bottle of beer? That's great. You want to do one? I'll do two. You want to do two? I'll do four. You want to do four? I'll do six. I was always trying to be the guy that doing one more. I, I wanted someone talking about me. I didn't care if you talked bad about me. I just wanted you talking about me some way, right? So, uh, is it anybody else? Did it, you guys suffer from selective hearing? Anybody in here? <laughs> Come on, be honest this morning. Selective hearing. 
this. I hear what I want to hear. I have to work on it every day. They should have a, a self-help group for that. Selective hearing uh, anonymous, right? <laughs> All right, so selective hearing. One of the coaches at Central Missouri State was transferring from uh, Warrensburg to William Jewell College, Liberty, Missouri. And he asked me a very simple question. Hey, Joe, why don't you come with us? Nothing more. This is what I heard. Hey, Joe, why don't you come with us? You'll be the starter. I got to William Jewell. Now, let me set it in perspective. I was raised Catholic, went to a very large state university, and transferred to a Southern Baptist college. I was like, uh, what's going on here? Anyway, I didn't get the starting job. I was upset again. So what did I continue to do? Party. That's where my acceptance came in. Well, while I'm at William Jewell, I got a job at Just for Feet Shoe Store in Overland Park, Kansas. And while I was at Overland Park, Kansas, I was promoted to assistant manager very fast. Are you guys familiar with Just for Feet? Yeah, pretty cool story. Now, for a kid that didn't have everything that he ever wanted, this is where everything was, right? I was promoted to assistant manager, grew up on a 400-acre cattle ranch, you know, had a great work ethic, and started getting keys to places I probably did not need. Well, while I was there, my cocaine addiction was progressing, my addiction overall was progressing, and, you know, I didn't have the money to buy the things that I worked around all day because I was partying all the time. So I started stealing my addiction got heavier. A guy that I was using uh, with said, hey, let's steal some shoes. I said, I'm already doing that. He's like, no, let's do a lot. Well, the first time went well. The second time did not. At the age of 20, I caught my first felony charge, and I covered the whole situation up for my family, my friends, and especially school. I threw money at the situation, got probation, acted like it never happened. Went back to school, and then I saw these three movies, you've already seen the slide, that affected my life greatly. You guys ever heard of these movies? Oh, yeah. huh? Scarface, Goodfellas, and Casino. I saw these movies in a 1,900-person town. Judy, are there any gangsters in McDonald County or Anderson, Missouri? Not many. No. There's, there's just none. So I was intrigued by this lifestyle. I was intrigued by the personalities that these people had. So I started adopting that in my own life. I started going to class when I wanted. I talked to people whenever I wanted. And I thought it was real cool when the Internet started getting big and I could start downloading papers and putting my name on it just the way I wanted so I was caught for plagiarizing on one of my college midterm papers. I was asked to leave school, and I was allegedly, you guys probably love that word, allegedly selling marijuana on a college campus. I admit today I've done my fourth step. I was doing it. All right? They just couldn't prove it at the time. They asked me to leave school for a semester. I went back to school a semester later. But during that semester away, I used every drug I could get my hands on. I hurt the people that loved me the most, my family and my parents. But I went back to school, and I'm getting another opportunity. I already covered one felony up. I had this opportunity. I get kicked out of school. I get to go back to the same school, and I'm allowed back on the football team. That's pretty cool, right? So anyway, I get back to school, and anybody here from Kansas City? All right. So I'm, I go back to school, and I have to get, a, I have to get an internship. Now, you guys are going to know this. I didn't get just any internship. I got an internship at the number one rock radio station in Kansas City. Get your seat. 98.9 The Rock, the number one hit radio station in Kansas City. You see where my energy came from last night? Yeah. I like that stuff. It's pretty fun. But you know what? It wasn't. People didn't like me for who I was. They liked for what I could do for them. I could get them in bars. I could get them backstage in concerts. And I could get them into rock concerts, right? So my acceptance was being fulfilled like I wanted it, not in a healthy way. Correct? Okay, so... During this great time of decision making, I'm working at the radio station, having a blast, acting like a pretty big idiot. And then um, as I'm at the radio station and I was like, man, do I really need to stay in school? So with 93.5 hours recruiting college credit, that's one year short of getting your bachelor's of science, I decided to walk away from school. Great idea, right? I thought I was going to pursue my criminal lifestyle. I was going to work at the radio station. And I did just this thing. I was in St. Joseph, Missouri one day, and uh, I was doing a drug deal, had way too much, too, too many drugs with me, got in a car wreck, I was under the influence, to say the least. I tried to disperse some of the evidence.